Hello and welcome to Cool Your Damn Jets. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is a company called uh, TetaCare. They're in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, they've made the news lately. Uh, as a frequent patient of the healthcare system, I'm worried about what I'm seeing, and I think, uh, quite frankly, it is stupid. Uh, let me make it clear that I'm not a patient of them. I've never been in their facilities. I don't know them beyond what I've seen in the, the news um, or on YouTube. Uh, a lot of the information I got were, is from Steve Lato's channel, Lato's Law. Uh, and I read the stories in the Post Crescent. Uh, and I found this case interesting because, first of all, I'm a patient and I'm very big on ad advocacy for patients. And uh, also, according to Wikipedia, Appleton is a city very comparable to the city nearest to us. Um, it's sa about the same size, uh, same composition of people. Um, I'm not going into the same in all respects, but it's uh, close. So um, that story resonated with me. Um, because remember, I have a lymphoma and I was treated first at the hospital, local hospital, which feels a lot like Appleton right now. Well, uh, not Appleton, I mean like Tedacare right now. And um, they misdiagnosed me with MS and they treated me for MS and it was complete nonsense. Uh, so I, I'm, I see a resemblance between the two situations. Um, so let, let me get into the, the story and then I'm going to give you my take on it. Um, I'm going to give, give, summarize the story. I'm not going to go into all the legal details. If you want the legal details, you should go to Steve Lato's channel, Lato's Law. And, and, and I'm going to put the link in the description so that you can easily find uh, the stories he made about uh, TetaCare. Um, so you have to realize that the employees that we're talking about, that we're going to talk about, they're at-will employees. And what this means is that the company can fire them at any time. But the flip side is that the employees can also leave at any time. And as far as I know, there is no exception in the law for medical employees or employers that find that they're in a tough situation because employees are leaving. If if all your employees decide to leave one day, then they're all leaving. That's And you're out of business. That's the end of it. Um and and the company Teracare was not able to find uh, actually a, an article of law to help them because there isn't. Um, so on January twentieth, uh, Teracare asked for an, a, a temporary injunction. Uh, they filed the, the 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 request for the temporary injunction on January twentieth, uh, and they were trying to prevent the employees from working at. Uh, another hospital called Ascension. They cannot force the employees to f work for Teta Care because um, the 13th Amendment of the Constitution prevents that from happening. You cannot force somebody into labor in the United States. The 13th Amendment prevents it. So the only thing you could do was to ask the judge to prevent them from working at Ascension, which they did. Uh, on January 21st, the temporary injunction was granted by the judge. And from what we can take from what the judge said and what happened, uh, it was hoping that they would come to a resolution over the weekend. So January 21st was a Friday, and it was hoping over the weekend they would come to a resolution and there would be a hearing the next Monday to see if the injunction would become permanent or would be dissolved. Uh, where the employees uh, were heard and, you know, the council was heard on both sides and the employees were heard. And some of the things the employees said was that Ascension offered a better work-life balance. I don't know that the problem is primarily money, but it was a better work-life balance. And they went back to TetaCare and, and told them that they were going to leave for Ascension. And they asked them... Uh, to match the offer and TetaCare said no uh, you know it would cost us more to keep you long term with those new conditions than it is to just say no um, 
but the judge looked at the the whole situation and you know th- those are at will employees so the judge couldn't do much he, he what he did on January 24th was to de- dissolve his temporary injunction so from now on the employees could work at ascension and they could move to that new company well it's not the new company they could move to a company that was new to them but not new generally speaking um but besides the injunction there was an underlying um lawsuit from Teta Care, I guess, Ascension, which asserted that Ascension had improperly, they had improperly gotten the employees from Teta Care. And I listened to that and it's like, are you just inventing law now? Because does, how is it improper? The, the employees were at will employees. They didn't have a contract with Teta Care. They didn't sign a contract saying, I'm going to work for you a number of years. And they didn't decide to go away before the end of the contract. They were at will employees. They could have been fired anytime. And they had the choice for them to move on to any other place anytime. That's how at will means. That's what at will means. And there's a, I, there's no law that make, creates an exception for healthcare employees. Yeah, Teta Care was saying that the, the employees were hired improperly, not substantiated. But anyway, eventually on January 28th, um, they decided to dissolve that lawsuit. They realized that it was not in their best interest to pursue that lawsuit. I think if they had gone forward with it, they would have lost. Um, there's no law. There's no law they can rely on to say they were improperly poached. And the whole story, if you listen to the employees, was that, you know, think, um, Ascension had ads and they responded to the ads, diff- you know, independently. They didn't, co- they didn't collude for some reason to go there, but they could have colluded. There's no law against deciding together to go to another company. They are at will employees. That's what at will means. If you want to have your employees tied to you, you give them a contract. And then maybe the contract is going to be good enough for them to stay with you, want to stay with you and sign it. And, you know, everybody is happy. But if you decide that your employees are going to be at will, then they have the choice to leave at any time. That's what it means. Um, and I found the whole thing stupid on, on multiple counts. Uh, first of all, the Teta Care decided that instead of benefiting their employees more, they would spend resources on lawyers. You see, because the the the, the calculus is not that the lawyers are not free. You know, you have to pay them. So they decided to spend resources on lawyer instead of spending resources on their on their employees. Um, also have to wonder, you know, now that there's Ascension that is poaching their employees, who is staying at Teta Care exactly? Are those people who are staying staying there because they cannot find a job somewhere else? If the conditions are such that other employees are finding better jobs somewhere else, why are those why are some people staying there? And and I realize there are multiple departments and multiple people with different working conditions they can possibly you know the the accounting department might have different conditions than the nursing department uh but i as a patient i'm a patient i look at that and i'm wondering who is staying there who is accepting the apparently terrible working conditions um the unbalance between you know the, the the private life and the work life, which is what the employees were complaining about. Who is accepting that? And as a patient, I want my doctors to be rested. I want my doctors to have a peaceful mind and not be panicking like, oh my God, I have so many patients or I have so, my shifts are so long that I'm just burned out. Um, I'm looking at this as a patient. Um, and so are the people staying there competent? And there are multiple t- 
types of competency. You know, you can be there. There's something called situational incompetence, where somebody who's generally competent will will go, get out of their field of expertise and say things that are not true. And so they were. So this made the rounds of the news, and there were, I think, there were stories in the New York Times and the Washington Post about this hospital. And there were articles in the post Crescent three articles I'm going to link in the description below. Uh, and a quote from the last article in there just shows you how st stupid the whole situation is. Uh, and this is Teta Care's president and CEO, uh, Imran Andar Andrabi. Imran, Imran Arda Adrabi. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Sorry. Imran Adrabi. It says, Adrabi said Friday that the national attention on the lawsuit had surprised him. He said he understood the impact on the employees who were caught in the dispute, but that he felt that TedaCare's reasoning for pursuing legal action, which was preser preserving around-the-clock stroke and trauma care in the region, the lawyers argued, had been lost in the social me media discussion of it. No, their, their reasoning was understood by everyone, but their reasoning was stupid. And by the way, um, Dr. Uh, Andrabi do meet the Streisand effect. Because before this whole story came on the national scene, I had never heard of Tedacare. They're, they seem to be regional, uh, a regional healthcare company. So I've never heard of them. And most people probably didn't, didn't hear of them in their environment. But because they did a stupid lawsuit, now a lot of people have heard of them and they know that they are stupid. And a stupid lawsuit leads to stupid consequences, which was like everyone uh, taking them to task for what they did. And, you know, sometimes you can, sometimes lawyers do. Uh, launch stupid lawsuits and it, it does happen and it happened a lot with the previous president um, they do launch stupid lawsuits that are doomed to fail and sometimes it's for performative reasons like how you show your supporters that yeah you're on the ball um, and then you can always blame the court for dismissing your lawsuit which has no basis in reality um, so some do go unnoticed. They, they go, you know, they're, they're launched and sometimes they're dismissed. Uh, and sometimes the court says, uh, eventually says, no, your lawsuit is, is nonsense. And they're go unnoticed. But once in a while, you can win the lottery and you can put up a stupid lawsuit and everybody's going to talk about it because it is so mind bogglingly stupid that it is worth talking about it. And it is the case here. Everybody understood what the lawsuit was all about. Uh, it was about, you know, preventing the employees from working somewhere else. And it's complete nonsense. So as a patient, you know, where do you think Tita Care will fall on my list of possible places for treatment for me? And they do a lot of, it's a hospital, they do a lot of stuff. There's primary care, there's all kinds of things going on there. So if I were to uh, to live in that area in Appleton, Wisconsin, and I were to look around, where am I going to get my care? I can tell you right now, Teta Care would not be on my list because I have serious concerns about who's staying at that place, their capabilities. Not everybody has the same capability, and I've seen it firsthand with the care that I received at the, my local hospital versus the care I received at Innova and the care I received at Johns Hopkins and the care I received at UMMC. Those Innova, Johns Hopkins, UMMC are much better places than the local hospital for cancer care, especially for primary CNS lymphomas because over here they could not recognize what it was. Um, so if I were there, the company would be it would not even be on my list of possible places. I would look at uh, Ascension because they're poaching their employees, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah, I wanted to give you my my view of the situation as a as a patient, as somebody who's been in the system and who's seen all kinds of doctors and who's fired pretty much his own his whole 
healthcare team and switched to people who work at, at Johns Hopkins for the most part. Um, this doesn't look good. This is stupid. And I think the CEO who, who says that social media didn't get it, I think he is stupid too. I mean, it might be an excellent doctor, could be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm speculating. I don't know those people. But what I'm reading in the article, it's nonsense. It is stupid. Um, so this was my rant against uh, TedaCare. Uh, you can always leave comments if, if you feel so inclined. Uh, but I warn you, especially in this case, um, there's going to be moderation. So, um, in the meantime, I say goodbye and see you next episode.